now that we have drawn and uh, formatted our drawing, it's time to apply the various animations so that we can achieve what we were looking for. And remember what we are looking for is to get the sliding jaw to move to the right and to the left several times during our demonstration. And we are still working with PowerPoint. So I'm onto this slide here which does not have any animations at all. So let me put away this pen so that we can remove a lot of uh, distractions. So we want to get the sliding jaw to do what it is meant to do. That is slide along this path here to the right and to the left. How do we do that? We go over to the animations tab. That animation tab there. When you click on it, you'll go to the right hand side over here where you've got the animation pen. You click on it so that we can have that pen appearing there because once we have a certain type of animation, we might be forced to work on it a little bit more in order to achieve exactly what we want. The next thing is to click on the part which we are interested in and that is the sliding jaw. So I'm going to click on it. So let us select the sliding jaw. So I'm just going to click there and I use the the arrow keys on my keyboard just to see whether it can move. So I'm going to tap on that key and you can see that the sliding jaw is actually moving to the right. And you can see all this boundary here. All this boundary shows everything that I've grouped inside here. So let me return it to its original position. So at that point, I'm sure that I have selected the right shape. Then while I'm still on the animation, I'll go to add animation. Click on it. And then down here, we've got more parts, more motion parts. Click on that. And this is what we want to happen. We want this sliding jaw to move to the right and to move to the left. All these are types of motion which are possible. As a matter of fact, if you click on any one of them, you can see what happens. Like for example, this one makes that selected part to move down. So if I click on it, for example, like that, you can see it makes it to move down. So that is not what I want. I want this one here. So I'll have to click on the one which I want, which is to make it to move to the right like that. That is exactly what I want. Once you are satisfied with your selection, just say OK. And there you have it. Now to play your animation, you'll have to come here Click on it and you can see. Now you've got your jaw sliding to the right and sliding to the left. There is this arrow here which appears when the animation pane is in sight. This, this point here shows the center of your selected shape. Your selected shape is the sliding jaw. And I've just shown you that the sliding jaw has got all that you know, boundary like that. Its center is at this point. The animation is always applied to the center of the object. This arrow shows the direction in which the shape is going to move. And the length of that arrow shows how far it's going to move from this point. So if you want it to move through a shorter distance, I simply need to grab this section here and move it back. But I think I'm going to leave it at that point so that you can do your adjustments later on. Next, there are a few changes which I want to make. So I'll come to this arrow. First of all, if I want to remove that animation, I just need to click here. But actually what I want to do is to look at the timing. So there is these two seconds here. What these two seconds mean is that it takes two seconds to move from this point all the way to that point. If you want it to move it a little bit slowly, you'll have to increase that time. Maybe let's say five seconds. So five seconds. 
maybe a little bit better because when your students are looking at it for the first time, if it moves so fast, they might not be able to see what is happening. So I will choose five seconds. But feel free to choose any time that you're interested in. Besides, you can customize it. You can just bring your cursor there and type in the time which you want. Then there is a section written repeat. Do you want this motion to be repeated? Of course I do. And maybe I want it to be repeated until the end of the slide or repeated four times, five times, ten times or until the next click. I want it to go on until the end of the slide. So that is what I want to happen. How about uh, rewind when done playing? Now this one now does not apply because I've already chosen this. Let's go to effects. Now the effects means that when this sliding jaw starts to move, it moves faster and faster and faster and faster for the first 2.5 seconds. I can change that time by using these arrows here. Either decrease the, the time or increase the time the way I want. So for now, I just want to leave it at 2.5 seconds. And here, when the sliding jaw comes to a halt or stops, it decelerates and it takes again another 2.5 seconds. Total 5 seconds. So again, I want some smooth start and some smooth ending. So I don't want to mess around with that. Auto reverse. Auto reverse means this. When this shape moves all the way up to that point, it can retrace that path back to where it started from. Again, that is the effect which I want. So I want it to auto reverse. If I don't click here, what will happen is when that shape moves all the way to that point and I already have a repeat. See this repeat here? What we'll do is that that shape will fly. It will take a very short time to fly back here and then start the motion once again. Of course, that is not what I want. I want a situation where it can move all the way to that point, uh, come momentarily to a stop, and then again slide back to where it started from and keeps on moving like that smoothly. That is why I have this box checked. But feel free to investigate all these and make it move the way you want. After all, you are just learning how to use these special animations which can be used to simulate the vernier calipers. So once I'm satisfied, I will just say OK and it demonstrates that for me the moment I say OK. But even if it doesn't do that, Remember, you can always come here and click play. You can play that and it can show you what you're going to get. Another way of doing that is to simply go to slideshow. Each and every time you make some changes, you can go to slideshow just by clicking that and then saying current slide. You click on that and then you click play and you'll be able to see the kind of changes you've made. If you are satisfied with that, you can end the slideshow and you can say now your lesson is ready. And you can see this is how simple it is. Just by using the animations, you can be able to show various types of motion. So feel free to investigate the animation tab each and every time you're working on PowerPoint and it can bring in very good ideas when you are preparing lessons for your students. And that brings us to the end of this particular session where I was trying to show you how to use PowerPoint to simulate the motion or the working of a vernier calipers. I hope it has been of tremendous help. You've learned something that you can be able to apply to your various uh, lessons and if this is the case and you happen to visit this page for the first time, I will really appreciate if you subscribe and share this video with your friends 
so that they can also learn this wonderful technique of making our lessons come to life.